This is the second time that I'm shooting this video. I really hope you enjoy it. My mic died the first time and trust me, YouTube videos just take a lot of effort in terms of talking, constantly looking into a camera. There's a light on your head. So sincerely hope that you end up watching this video till the end and you find it informative as always and fun and entertaining. So on that note, hello and namaste. My name is Nadi Nagori and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm here to talk about another country that actually has been on my top five. So I know a lot of people People think that I've come to Canada and this is like my end goal and this is be it all, see it all, do it all. But that's not true. I mentally keep thinking and keep imagining myself in different parts of the world and I have my own mental list of countries that I want to be in. And I'm particularly excited about this country in today's video because this has been on my list for very long. I do see myself living in this beautiful country one day and this amazing country is Netherlands. So today I'm introducing a self-sponsorship pathway to Netherlands where you don't need any kind of a work, you don't need any kind of job letter, you don't need any kind of business. All that you need to do is apply for this particular visa and move. Yes, you can call it a job seeker visa. So today we're going to be checking that out for Netherlands. If you are interested in Netherlands, make sure you stick around. All right, before we dive into the information part of this video, I just want to take a few minutes from you and ask you a very quick question. Anytime you hear the word Amsterdam, what are the two images or what's the first image that pops up in your mind? I'm asking this question because anytime I hear of Amsterdam, there are two images that come in my mind. The first image is always that I Amsterdam sign. Now, I'm not sure if other cities or other countries started doing that particular signage, having a signage city sign. I just happened to see Amsterdam being one of the first cities that had like a city sign. And I really love that I Amsterdam. I don't know if you can imagine that signage, but I'm going to put it up somewhere here on the screen so you know exactly what I'm talking about. But this is one of the first things that I can think of. The second image that comes in my mind is one of those beautiful Amsterdam canals living on the river, also uh, riding a bike with a bunch of beautiful flowers in the front. At this point, I know I'm totally romanticizing the idea of being in Amsterdam. But if you have any such images or if you have your own version of how you imagine Amsterdam or Netherlands in general, please let me know in the comments because if there's anything new to discover about Netherlands, I'm totally up for it and I want to go for it. Okay, that's a rather long intro to showcase my love for the city, but that's the fun part of it. Now let's come and talk about the informative part of this video. The visa that I'm introducing to you today is the orientation visa for highly educated persons. Did I just say highly educated persons and are you already turned off? Well, hold on, because I'm going to prove exactly why you should not be turned off and why you should not be dropping at this point in the video. So this particular self-sponsorship visa is meant for people who are well-educated. This is very different from people who work in critical skills. Being a critical skills person and being a highly educated person can be the same thing. Say, suppose if you are in healthcare, if you're a nurse, if you're a physician, yes, you're already in short supply and you're somebody who's also highly educated. But they could not always align because you could have critical skill sets that are in short supply. Say, suppose you are somebody who works in the construction industry, manufacturing industry, or you're working in shipping, logistics. These are shortages that are existing across the world. Nothing new and nothing specific to Netherlands or any other country. So if you are, say, a factory worker who's working on the factory floor, if you're somebody who's driving a truck, or if you're somebody who's working in the hospitality industry by waitressing or waiting tables, etc. Your skill sets are in short supply. So you are in the critical supply list for that country, but you're not always the most educated person. You could be if you are in some other field, but you're not always the most educated person. So you would not qualify for the highly educated persons list. This leads us to a very simple conclusion. There's a pro and there's a con. The pro is that you do not have to be somebody who is on a critical skills list only. So even if your skill is not in short supply, even if your skill is not in heavy demand, which is a question I get very often, say suppose I'm in architecture or if I am in marketing, I mean, obviously, my skills are not in short supply um, across the world. And so where is it that I can move? You can still qualify for this particular sponsorship, like this particular self-sponsorship, because even though your skill sets are not in critical shortage or it's in critical supply, even then, if you're meeting the criteria of being the educated person that they're demanding, then you can sponsor yourself and move to Netherlands. And I think that is really exciting. What I love about this visa is the flexibility that it offers. So you do not have to be in, say, a particular field. It does not specify what is the field that you have to be in, what is the experience that you need to have. There's a lot of flexibility in terms
terms of what field you're from, what are your skill sets, as long as you meet their basic education requirements. You guys know I love segmenting my videos. So my first segment was just introducing the concept of a highly educated person and showing how it is very different from somebody who's on the critical skills list. I do want to tell you that these kind of visas are now becoming more common in the recent past. I've seen UK uh, and UAE come up with these visa and Netherlands has also adopted it. But I do see other countries like Singapore, Canada and New Zealand also adopting them in near future. On that note, let's move on to segment number two, where I explain what is self-sponsorship. So most European countries need two permits, residence and work permit to be able to move there and live there and work. In Netherlands, that's also the case. So you need a residence permit and you need a work permit. But for this particular visa, the work permit part of it is exempt. So you don't need a sponsor at all. You don't need anybody to sponsor you. You don't need any job. You don't need any kind of sponsorship to be able to apply for this visa. At this point, I'm sure you're pretty excited and you're like, what are the requirements? what is the eligibility criteria? Please Nidhi spill all the beans. So let's move on to segment number three where we talk about the requirements of this particular visa. Well, first of all, you should be applying for this visa within three years of your graduation, whether you studied in Netherlands or abroad. There is no age criteria that has been set. So even if you did your master's, let's say 40 and you're 41 right now, you could still be applying for this particular visa. You can use this visa for an entire year. So you get one year to look for a job or you can even start your own business. Apart from this, you need a valid passport, you need to sign a statement and if you're from a certain country, you might be asked to do the tuberculosis test. Now, here's an important part of the requirement. You should not have had any residence permit for Netherlands, be it for work or for PhD or for research. If you have had a residence permit for any of these three pathways or any of these three options, then you're not eligible for this visa. This visa is specifically targeted either at students who've graduated from Netherlands itself or for students who have graduated from countries outside of Netherlands. Coming on to the study requirements, there are some basic requirements. If you go to the website, it's a little confusing, so I'm going to break it down. I'm going to give you just the two points that are actually important in the website. If you graduated from Netherlands, then obviously your options are much more. But if you're somebody who studied outside of Netherlands, then there are two things that you need to look at. One, whether your university was in the top 200 when you graduated or not. You could be using the QS uh, ranking system or there are a variety of lists that they mentioned. So just go and check in that when you graduated. Was your university in top 200 in the world? I know at this point, a lot of my Indian audience is probably going to be turned off because not a lot of Indian universities feature on that list. For you, there is another pathway. Now, if you've done your master's in a program that is co-chaired, co-supported and co-created by the Erasmus framework, then you are eligible to apply for this visa. And I'm happy to let you know that some Indian universities and colleges do feature in that list. At this point, I'm sure you're already wondering, how do I apply to Netherlands? How do I apply for this visa? How do I get a job, etc.? What's the next step forward? Well, I'm going to plug in and introduce my Netherlands masterclass that we already did. And it was an amazing masterclass. Over 500 people have already taken it. We had four mentors, each of whom moved to Netherlands on work visa sponsorship. They got the tax benefit as well. So if you move to Netherlands on work visa, 30% of your income is tax exempt. So you don't pay any tax on that income and all our mentors were able to get that. They give you very specific tips about how you can look for opportunities, how you can find opportunities in Netherlands and they share a lot of relevant information say about cost of living, housing, uh, what relocation support they got, what visa support they got, how was their interview, how long did it take etc etc. The course is super economical. I'm going to leave the link in the description box below for you to go check it out. Apart from the mentors, we also discuss the immigration situation in Netherlands. We give you a lot of resources including more than 70 recruitment agencies in Netherlands. There's a government website that was launched by the government of Netherlands, which has an entire job portal in different fields. And we take you through everything in the course itself. Like I said, there's a lot that's up for offer. So please make sure you check the link that's in the description box or in the pinned comment. And on that note, this video has come to an end. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please don't forget to hit the like button down below, subscribe to the channel and comment. Let me know what you'd like to see on the channel next. Let me know what you think about this video or if you have any other questions about Netherlands. I promise to see you in the next video. Until then, make sure you stay safe. Take care. Namaste.